People ask us what the government's policy is on cloud, and I like to think of it as a dry as a bone policy. It's a policy for Australia, designed in Australia. It encourages the use of Australian IT. It takes into account that if you go out in the clouds, sometimes you're going to get wet, and you need to take appropriate precautions to do that. But the precautions that you take need to be such that you can take them off if it gets dry, and that's the nature of a dry as a bone policy. It's Australian, it takes into account the circumstances, and as the circumstances change, you can do something about them. And I'm going to talk to you about today where we see the circumstances at the moment and where we see them going. Firstly, you've heard this morning a lot about what clouds are made of. I think it's important to note that we're doing things using cloud technology now. It's fashionable to call it cloud technology, but some of these things have been around for a while. Take virtualization. The Australian government's use of virtualization has improved threefold since 2007, 2008. We're running across the government at about three, three servers per, per physical server. The Gartner Worldwide ratio is about 1.9, so we're ahead of the game in that regard. Now, we're not running 60 servers a core or anything like that at the moment because there are horses for courses, but we are making use of virtualization now and will continue to do so. Secondly, we're reducing the costs of carriage of data between our data centres. Our coordinated procurement requirements that we've had in place now for a just over a year have reduced the cost of carriage with major ISPs from up to 50 to 60 to almost 70 per cent using the same carriers and the same circumstances. When you increase competition and cloud increases competition, you save money. The competition in the in the uh, desktop hardware space has reduced the, the amount that the government is paying for PCs from 56% above the Australian average to less than 55 to more than 55% below the Australian average in about 18 months. We're buying desktop PCs at the same price as the US professional market now. And what does that mean? It means that some of those ideas about VDI and things like that we, that we saw before, we can already consider in a better total cost of ownership means than just rushing to the cloud in order to do things. It doesn't mean that we don't want to use the cloud. It means that these existing technologies can make us smarter about how we buy IT in our own or in other data centres now before we get into the benefits of cloud. Now let's look at what makes it cloudy. These are the principles in the Australian government's cloud strategy and they're drawn from the NIST principles in the US. It's about elasticity, scalability, pay-as-you-go and running things across public infrastructure. That's how you get the benefits of of the public cloud particularly. Now the challenge for us is to understand that the cloud isn't the only way to buy IT. As you heard, there's opportunities to use these technologies in our existing data centres. And indeed, we would be silly not to use those technologies in our existing data centres. And that's the move we have towards adjusting these things. It doesn't necessarily have to just be about the cloud. Now, what do we get from clouds? What we get is an ability to do more faster and to do it for longer than we have otherwise ach achieved. And this is an important arrangement because of the changes that the value added ability of clouds provide us with. If we use them properly, we can get new business models, we can get to market faster, and we can reduce the costs. And the government's cloud policy brings all these things into account. It's that change that the way we want about what we want to do things. The notion of getting the common part of IT done in a common way, in a commoditized way, so your internal IT staff can concentrate on the things that differentiate your agency. And that's the goal of all our technology changes, not just cloud. Now, it's important to note that for Australia, t using the cloud isn't just about ticking the iCloud box on your iPad. There are more considerations around that than that. 
We have a range of international treaties that affect how we use IT and what we need to do about them. We've got issues of Australian industry development to take into account. If IT is the new economic driver for the world, why would we necessarily want to import that, export that economic driver overseas? Aren't there opportunities in Australia that we could see these things being done? If it provides value for money for the, for the government, and that's the important driver. We need to think about data sovereignty. We all know about the Patriot Act, and yes, there are some issues around that, but what we don't know are about how other governments in which data centres might be stored, that might be held, that put things in the cloud, what are their rules about these things? As I said, we know what about the Patriot Act, we know what it says, we can do, take those things into account, but what about data centres that are in other countries, lesser democracies? How do we manage those sorts of concerns and what do we think about doing there? Not to be frightened, but to be aware of what we do with government technology and government data. Now we know already that some things are ready, are ready to move now into the cloud. To give you an example, and this is a page drawn from our cloud um, strategy, our cloud framework. To give you an example, I look after data.gov.au. The front page, if you like, the, the, the entry for data.gov.au is an, an outsourced data centre by, by a partner of ours, a, a private business, running not their data centre but someone else's data centre in Sydney. The back end is in the Amazon cloud. Why is this the case? Because the thousand odd data sets that will be in data.gov.au soon are designed specifically to be provided to the public. It makes no sense to lock them up securely where no one can get them. It makes sense to put them in a place where we can take the benefit of the cloud, get the flexibility that allows, the scalability that allows, people can all go and look at the data at once if that's what's required, and it reduces our costs. Now there's going to be a whole bunch of things in that data arrangement, those data arrangements, that allow us to make that sort of um, benefits. If you think about web pages, the web pages that government provides facing people now don't usually contain secure information. They don't need to collect information about customers. And if they do, it can be through some form of hybrid cloud arrangement where the secure data can be in our secure data centres and the public facing data can be in the public cloud, wherever that is. It's that sort of mix of value for money, of considering the whole arrangement that's important to consider. 